Good day and welcome to your favorite sport program on TV Plus Sport. My name is Mudashi Shitu and I'll be your anchor in the next um, few minutes as we look at trending stories in the world of sport. At the Executive Council, we all know that um, there's a lot of reshuffling of cabinet and, you know, sacking of ministers all went on um, at the Executive um, Council meeting. One thing that pertains to sport has been trending and that is the scrapping of the sport um, ministry and that will be replaced by the National Sport um, Commission. Um, when the present um, um, president came in power, we, there was a change of name from the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sport to the Federal Ministry of Sport. That was probably like um, an eye opener of what many things or many reform expected to come. Nobody would believe that um, that is just the beginning of many things that has to do with sports from the government. And it's interesting to know that um, this has been trending since the declaration. And we, as we speak right now, the minister, former, let me use now the former minister of sport, John Ennon, has been, is now the minister of state for. Um, industry and um, these are what uh, we'll be looking at about the scrapping of um, the sport ministry and the restatement um, of um, the National Sport um, Commission. Joining me to talk about this it, for a lot of people that don't really understand what it is all about and a lot of Nigerians don't um, they want to have a proper view of what this is all about, what's the difference between the National Sport Commission and the sport ministry. There have been a lot of people responding to this new development. The former sport minister talking about, um, the, uh, the former sport minister, name I've forgotten now, spoke about this. And um, we're having Kule Sholaja with us here, who will be telling us his own expert opinion on what it means and what we should be expecting as the news has been trending across um, the internet in Nigeria. It's good to have you on the show, Kone Solaja. Yeah, good evening. Thank you very much. Yes, um, Solomon Dallon, the, sport, um, the former Minister of Sports, has um, said that they should, that this scrapping of the Sport Ministry and the restatement of um, the National Sport Commission is not a very good idea. And though some have been giving top up for it, while some say they can call um, we can um, strive together. So, uh, we, uh, we want to hear your own opinion and give us a memory lane of what it is all about. Well, thank you very much. Uh, maybe this will be the first time in many years that we will have the National Sports Commission without a supervisory ministry. Uh, the National Sports Commission, as we know, was established in 1962, first as National Sports Council. So, but it was in 1971, by Article 34 of 1971, that the National Sports Commission was formally established. Before then, we have the National Sports Council, and then again, we have the supervisory minister in charge of sports. But as at that time, sports was just an appendage of the Ministry of Labour. And then the Minister of Labour at the time was Mogolanji, uh, I mean, uh, they, they call him JFJ, that is standing for Mogolanji Johnson, not the Brigadier General. So after that, we now went to the era of having a sports ministry order. I mean, the, the, the sports commission under the Ministry of Information. So it was in 1975 that we first had a proper Ministry of Sports, and then it was uh, existing along with the sports, the National Sports Council, and the, the National Sports Commission. So, and that went on uh, from 1971 to 1975. Then from 1975 to 1979, we then have uh, the Ministry of Social Development, Youth and Sports. And as at that time, too, uh, one of the apex uh, uh, organizations under the Ministry was the National Sports Commission. Then, by 
by 1991, March 6, to be precise, decree number 7 of 1991, the dead military president of Nigeria, Ibrahim Babangida, uh, repealed the decree that established National Sports Commission, and from that moment, legally, National Sports Commission ceased to exist. And up till now, there is still no law that has, uh, which we can say the National Sports Commission has a backing. The National Sports Commission returned under the, uh, the regime of Abacha by mere uh, presidential proclamation. How can there was a law that established it? And that is where the flaw is now. Because there's an existing law that has repealed and uh, 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 that has repealed the law that established the National Sports Commission. And that law now needs to be brought back for the National Sports Commission to be a legal entity. That's my own opinion as an individual. But then, if you also go to the decree that is for and amended by Decree 34 of 1975. There is a mode of entry or the mode of composition of the uh, National Sports Commission was once spread out. That has not been done now. All we know now is that there's a chairman for the National Sports Commission. We don't know whether all the members will be, because by commission, it is a very board. And the chairman, which is Madame Chiumdiko, uh, is the chairman of the board. But two are the board members. Those ones are yet to pay. And uh, it is most likely that they are just going to pay them without any recourse to uh, the membership representing particular sports uh, sectors in Nigeria. If you look at the decree that established the the previous decree that established the National Sports Commission. We have the armed forces being represented. We have the school sports being represented. We have the collegiate uh, sports being represented. We have the Olympic bodies being represented. We have the national sports federations being represented. So for this time around, we have not been told who the members will be. So and that's where I feel that uh, Okay, well, well said, um, Kulo Solaja. I'm sure that's um, a very um, simple explanatory of what has been going on with the Nigeria National Sports Commission. But let me ask you, do you be expecting the coming day um, that there should be a legal backing from the legislature to make this more into the law? Or don't you have a proper idea to do than just floating it as it is right now? I expect a legal backing to come. I know that in the last uh, uh, assembly, there, uh, 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 there was, uh, uh, it was it was one of the items stable, but unfortunately, that document died with the previous assembly. I don't know now whether it has been retained or proper implementation because, as it is now, it is just by mere presidential law. The National Executive uh, Council proclamation that has brought back the National Sports Commission. There still need uh, there still the need for an enabling law that will put it on the right footing and that will also spread the rules expected of the National Sports Commission and the uh, the way the membership of that commission will be composed. Okay, now let's, let's ask you, what's really the difference between um, the, a sport ministry and um, a national sport commission? Is that really the way forward um, to go about sport governance what? in the country? You know, by national sports commission, we mean technocrats from different sport sectors will come together. For instance, now, in this particular uh, national sports commission, I will expect that somebody from the uh, Internal Affairs Ministry, uh, industry, as well as the Foreign Affairs Ministry, should be represented. Because uh, the sports 
we I mean, the, the national source uh, producers of regions will not be limited to Nigeria. You will be receiving teams from outside Nigeria, and at the same time, we will also, our teams will also be traveling now. So issues about immigration will arise, and in that wise, the sports commission to have uh, a representative of the Internal Affairs Ministry or the Ministry of uh, of Foreign Affairs in that board. We should have somebody representing the Olympic body. We should have somebody representing the uh, women in sports. We should have somebody representing the interest of the federations, the sports federations in Nigeria in that way. So that way, we will have a commission that is composed largely of technocrats and not necessarily politicians. Okay, does this take away the bottom line? As you may know, the, the Minister of Sports is always a politician. So, whatever he is doing is politically inclined. We need a sports commission that will have technocrats that will shape the direction of our sports and uh, be able to uh, come up with templates uh, with which sports will be administered in Nigeria. But would this take away um, the bottleneck visual experience by the sport ministry, the nepotism, um, the unfair selectment, the issues we face abroad when we go for competition, the, the powerful sports secretary? Does it eradicate all these um, issues that the sport ministry is facing with the sport committee um, right now? Does the sport commission? Does it not, um, eradicate all these issues we'll be facing with the sport ministry? Well, I would have expected the sports ministry to still remain as the apex board. And then we have the National Sports Commission underneath it. That was what was before, at least in the, in the 80s, into the 90s. We have the sports minister, and then we have, we have the, the chairman and the board of the National Sports Commission who report to the minister. Because the commission itself does not have direct access to the Federal Executive, uh, Executive Council. So, whatever they desire, whatever they want, will not be channeled to the presidency through the sports minister. Hmm. That is my take. And that was what we have in the 80s. Is it, is, it, is it also, um, um, is it also the same thing it means by something close to what we call the Lagos State Sports Commission? And is it, is it operating in the same uh, structure? That's the, way, the same way we have the Lagos State Sports Commission and other states that have their own sport commission. Is, it like, is there any likelihood between the National Sport Commission and other state sport commission? Well, in this area, when we have the National Sports Commission, what existed in the states are sports councils. Okay. So in the area of Labor State Sports Council, you have of the, uh, before the splitting of the West, we have the Western State Sports Council. And now, on your sports council, in the State Sports Council, that's what was in existence. I think the Labor State decided to uh, abolish the uh, sports sector having uh, been under a ministry and rather to be a commission itself. So, before now, the sports, uh, the, in the states, what you have are the sports council and then they are the federal the sports commission. So, uh, I think in Labor State started that trend of having a sports commission without a uh, sports commissioner. Okay. Well, I'm still going back to my other question. I think um, there's a need because, you know, there's a lot of issues with regards to sport ministry. Um, um, yes, in, in, in running the affairs of sport in the country, um, the powerful sports secretaries, the issues with um, the the president of federations, and also with the sport ministry, how powerful some of the staffs of the sport ministry. I'm, I'm going to say this again. We just eradicate that because it, it is... Not is will this eradicate these all issues I just laid down right now with the introduction of the sport commission? Well, like I said earlier on, there was no need to abolish the position of 
uh, uh, sports so, minister. We should have had a sports minister with a trim down uh, portfolio and that is uh, having fewer personnel under him. And the, those other personnel should not be, should be under the sports commission. Because the sports commission will be the think tank of the sports ministry. Because it is supposed to be composed by technocrats, those who have accepted, uh, who have accepted uh, various aspects of our sports. That is, you have from the sponsorship, you have from the school sports, we have from the youth sports, we have from the, the, uh, the various sports clubs, not necessarily football clubs, the various, uh, various aspects of sports in Nigeria will have been represented. And by the time they come out with policies, with programs, then it is now for the sports uh, ministry to implement. But I still believe we still need sports minister. Okay, yeah, it's okay. That's a very fantastic um, opinion. But we, we, with um, the appointment of Shehu Diko um, as the chairman of the of the commission, we know he was a former vice, um, um, second vice president of the Nigerian Football Federation. He was one time, um, I think, the chairman or CEO of um, the league management company. And he has been involved in sport for a very, very long time. Uh, I, I'm not going to let you talk about whether it's good. Um, was a good is a good appointment or not? But let's now also look at what you expect to be the composition of um, other board, board members of the of the commission. Uh, how can this take? How can we take this initiative to ensure that Nigeria has a proper sports um, culture? Well, like I said earlier on, we just have a chairman now. But we don't know the board members. So, and I feel that, uh, except they are saying that they are going to give the, uh, the chairman the liberty to pick his team, okay. which may not be a good idea. Hmm. It would have been ideal that we call every sector of our sports. We look at uh, youth sports, we look at school sports, we look at the various departments of sports and then have representative from each of those sports. That should have been a key developers and make the announcement once and for all. Because right now, what will now happen is people now not be for membership, hmm. which should not have happened if the membership of the, uh, the board of the National Sports Commission Okay. had been announced at the same time when the revival of the sports commission was announced and the head of that sports commission was made. Now, now, now tell us what the first step. You, you are one of um, the living legends when it comes to sport in the country. No, no doubt about it. And I see no better person or not a lot of persons that are probably talking about this topic with. Uh, th what, uh, what do you think should be the first step if... if um, you, you know that um, the sport, National Sport Commission should take to ensure that um, we take the right step towards a very good sport culture and um, everything that has to do with sport in the right direction. I want to believe that every appointment there will be uh, specific rules spread out to the appointed person. So we are not in the future of that. And uh, by suggesting that so 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 and so goal should be given, will be will be, be counterproductive. Which means the, uh, the chairman will be going will be going against the I mean the, the role that has been assigned to him mm. by those who are appointed him, that is the federal executive council or the president. If we are to I mean uh, if we are to be very specific, so. I will, I will tell you that we will respect out, we will not be able to comment on what role should be given, I mean, uh, should be assigned to the chairman of the sports uh, commission. Okay, what well, else? Well, I'm sure the way we will, will be regarded as a junior minister and have the opportunity of attending federal executive council meetings on Wednesdays. We don't know yet. So until that is spread out, then that's when we know whether the revival of the sports commission is to 
we are in be an advantage or whether we still go to uh, be the same of the old. Okay, now now that means you, you share the same um, thoughts with um, the former Minister of Sport, Solomon Dalon, who said that they should have not um, cancelled or scrapped the sport ministry, that they should work um, in line with that. I, if that's the case, what, what do you think is the reason why, you, you, you said it earlier, but that the reason why both should work together might be because of executive power. But without the sport ministry right now, and we have um, just the National Sport Commission, what is the executive power? What channel do you think the chairman will take to, uh, to execute his power to ensure what would that be that disadvantage in the absence of no sport ministry? And well, the advantage are enormous, no doubt about it. But it still remains, one thing still remains clear. Sports has been downgraded a little hmm. because now, uh, this, the chairman of the National Sports Commission is not a cabinet uh, officer. Mm. Because as if you were to be a cabinet officer, the appointment would have been voted through the National Assembly. Mm. Like every minister uh, being appointed will have to appear before the National Assembly and for screening. But this one is just, is like just an MDA. Which even the sports minister could have done by making such appointment, and uh, such appointments come, and they may also uh, be dissolved by whoever uh, uh, announced the appointment without necessarily having to cause to the national assembly. So what it means is that the national sports commission chairman will not be able to attend the federal executive council meeting except for the potential or as peer observer. Okay, that means you must be reporting to probably the um, head of the chairman of sport in the House of Assembly or the National Assembly or as the case may be, I'm asking. I think, can you come again? Who is, is he then going to be reporting to in the case of um, Sherry Diko right now since um, he doesn't have the executive power, he's not a member of the Federal Executive Council. Who is he definitely going to be reporting to? Well, the, the appointment letter will state that whoever is going to report to, in the absence of a minister, maybe you will be, I mean, the president might delegate someone to whom you will be reporting to, or if the president so chooses, he will be reporting directly to the president. Okay. Let's, let's take a leave from um, other, uh, other countries. Is this what is attainable in other advanced countries when it comes to sport in America, in, the, in Britain, uh, in Britain and, or in UK rather, let me use UK joint. Um, so which, um, what's obtainable in other countries in compared to just this um, National Sport Commission? Yeah, we cannot use UK as an example, for instance, because UK is a practicing parliamentary form of government, okay. which means the ministers are all members of the country's assembly, okay. parliament. They, they meet at the parliament, they discuss issues across the board and all those which is still the case in Nigeria. We have separation of power. The executive has its power and the, uh, the legislators have theirs. So, we cannot use UK, for instance, because the, the sports minister in UK is, is a member of the parliament. Okay. So, but in Nigeria it is not. I also said America and other country that probably must um, have a similar, um, similar sports structure. Um, in America, they call their own secretaries. Okay. Not necessarily minister. Yeah, like you have your the foreign secretary. They are following uh, the, I mean, the secretary for this, secretary for that. So that's what they have. So every country has its own peculiar is a good. Where they have the National Sports Commission, for instance, now, the National Sports Commission, to me, just like we had before, I can give you an example. There was a time, uh, Omeria, as the, uh, as the Federal Minister for Information, has sports under him, 
And then we also have uh, Brigadier K. D. Silva as the chairman of the National Sports Commission reporting to him. Mm. So that's why I mean that the, the chain of command really has to be well articulated. And in other uh, aspects, when uh, after, after March 1991, when the sports uh, commission was uh, created, it was abrogated, there was no sports commission. Then we, have, we got into the era of executive chairman national sports commission. That's where we have our king and Mary, we have our uh, king and I think uh, in that case, they are the last person was uh, Shola Rules. Okay. Before uh, the, the sports, uh, before we now reverted to sports industry, and then again, we now have a, a, the chairman, executive chairman, national sports commission, hmm. and at the same time, edging the sports industry. So, we, 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 to me, we, we are really not cutting it right. So, we are really not cutting it right. We need to uh, at least spread that rule and have the chain of command. Who does the chairman national sports commission report to? Is it to the president or will it be reported to the vice president if sports is put as part of the portfolio of you know, the vice president? But something needs to be spread out. And that, until you spread this thing out clearly, it will just be uh, in, the, in, the, in the dark. Yeah, but well said, and um, I'm sure a lot of Nigerians watching us, not just Nigerians across the globe in Africa watching us, will probably have learned one more thing from your compressive um, and, um, analysis. But the chain of tie to or structure, like we said, probably might not be Nigeria's um, bottleneck or Nigeria's problem when it comes to sport management and sport structure. The sport ministry like it was uh, before the change of name, we probably have done so well if they are, um, the, the, the people in charge, the administrative angle of it, are doing the right thing. There will probably be no need of a national sport commission if the secretaries and the federation chairman and every other person are doing the right thing accordance to the rules or the lay down rules that governs any of them, there probably be, won't be any need of the National Sport Commission. And I want you to think a bit that what do you think is the reason why? I know it's very deep to think of what's the mind of the president or the executive member, but what do you think probably will be the reason why they decided to have this change? Well, I can't, I can't uh, think for the government, I'm not in government, I'm not saying this is the reason. But obviously, the poor performance at the Olympic Games could just be the stimulus that, uh, I mean, I mean, that made it uh, necessary for us to have a change. But I still believe that we just change if, uh, without really taking into consideration what we should have done because to me we should have still had the sports uh, council or sports commission under the sports minister. minister the only thing now is that they can now spell out the rule and the, the functions of the sports commission as it was before at the time uh she was the chairman of national sports commission it's a board it has a, a board and then at that same time we have uh, the accommodate as a as the sports minister. That's point. So, to me, the, the two can go side by side. Only one will be the 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 so now, no, no, my concern also is um, is what happened to to the staffs of um, the sport ministry? Are they all going to collapse into the sport ministry, um, the sport commission, or what happens to the secretaries, the coaches working under the sport ministries, and every other rule? The secretary of the minister of sport. Well, I think automatically 
and automatically we will discard rid of the sports ministry. They are all of the sports will be shown. That's what I think will be because that does not mean that we will pay everybody off because what we have, I mean, what that will have meant is that we just have a sole administrator, the chairman of the sports commission, without any board and without any staff. That's what it will have meant. But, but, but this, this also means that the, um, the sports secretary will still be the so, sports secretary um, or there will be a change or see the same structure under the sport ministry where we are. I don't really know. I don't really know what the structure will be because the announcement did not go into, did not give us any detail. We are only told that there is no one federal ministry of transport and in this case we now have the national sports commission. Okay. I, 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 when I spoke to you earlier today, the plan was also to, to hear about um, the verdict of CAV, but um, I, that's not going to be our discussion today, as there's not been anything concrete coming out of, um, of, 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 CAF, of CAF right now. So um, maybe in the coming days, we'll still have you talk to us about um, the CAF verdict. But there's something we can take away from um, the, the, the president of CAF. Mosepe, who, who said that, um, yeah, quote and unquote, that um, the, that he acknowledged the um, the bad treatment of um, of Libya um, against Nigeria um, some some weeks ago. What, what, what can you say about that before we round up for the show? Well, well from what the president said, certainly you can deal, you can make some. You know, uh, uh, Conclusion. Yeah. That one, the, the weight of evidence really changes against them. That is that. But I also want to believe that political uh, interference may also creep in. Because what Nigeria is actually asking for, the prayer of Nigeria, is that the match should be awarded definitively to the super eagles. Hmm. Three groups three points. Because, but then the Libyans and their allies are also saying that it was Nigeria that refused to play that match. Therefore, the match should be awarded to them, which is very, very, very unlikely. Because even CAF itself decided that the match is suspended. Because there's no way they would have expected footballers to move right from detention camp at the airport straight to the field without having the necessary uh, 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 the necessity of life through water and sleep so that would not have been possible and the match commissioner and the match officials have not been any pronouncement which means they all are laughing at so what the general expected is that they should declare that match awarded to Nigeria. But I have been suspicion that because of the political order too, they may ask for the match to be rescheduled and maybe. But what will not make that one to work is the already congested international calendar. Because from now almost to November, December next year, the international uh, football calendar it's already choked up. Mm -hmm. So to be to be uh, be, to expect that okay, one team will probably have to play or the two teams will probably have to play in the window then for the World Cup, which is March next year, that they will have to squeeze up time to play the uh, the the the, the event after the airport match, which to me will not have been necessary. The best thing is for CAF to just take a definitive decision, which means the team that is found culpable, which from all pronouncement is Libya. And they are also one way at the bottom of the, of the team. So even awarding the match to them or having that match to be replayed is just like the main, I mean, the, the group state. So, the so, best thing is for that match to be awarded to the Super Eagles. So is there any I'm not saying it because I'm in the beginning, but I'm saying it from the point of necessity. 
Okay. Is there, is there any point, before I let you go, so interactive here, before I let you go, is there any possibility of sharing the support, I mean, getting more points at peace? Do you think that probably thinking of uh, whether Nigeria will also get one point and uh, perhaps one goal and Libya getting also one point and to share? You cannot do that because the rule is very clear. Hmm. In case a team for peace in March, which means the Libyans didn't allow the match to go because the, 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 uh, the survivors could not have played that match inside the airport where they were held for close to 20 hours. So, since they were not, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we made it the match impossible. What that means is that, that they, uh, they, they were the ones who forfeit the match. Um, the rule is very clear about it. There is no rule that says points should be shared. Points are only shared when matches are played and so. But if that match is not played, the definitive winner will have to be declared. Either you say team A for refusal to play or team B for making that match impossible. So a decision, a definitive decision has to be made. There's no side news. The only thing that could be done is that if that match were to be declared, it needs to have some sanctions that will follow it. If it is to be declared, Libya will have to inform all the expenses incurred by Nigeria flying to Libya and flying back. And possibly, if that match were to be declared, it will have to be in the neutral ground yeah. and they will also have to put it in. And considering that they have nothing to gain, nothing to lose in that match. The possibility of they are due to that is only zero. Mm -hmm. So that's why the man goes to the survivors. Yeah, um, Kune Solaja, we want to say a big thank you for being part of today's show. We thank you for your in-depth analysis on um, the issue trending right now, the Sport Ministry and the restatement of um, the National Sport Commission. And um, we hope that um, in subsequent days, if there's an update on that, we'll find you uh, to be a delight to have you talk more about because it's obvious that not so much uh, of, of a journalist, we know so much about those areas that you just mentioned where Nigeria was still under the National Sport Commission and when it was still being supervised by the ministry or where it was reporting to all this you've analyzed for. So, in subsequent days, if there's an update to guess who the board members are or who are what the composition of the board, we have you um, to talk more on this. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Yeah, it's always a pleasure to have um, Kone Solaja with us on the show. This is our the cutting for today. I want to say a big thank you for being part of the show. Don't forget, same time tomorrow, we'll be giving you all what you need to know in the world of sport. I'm Mudashi Bye for now.